shocked at how bad this movie is. Nothing is explained to the audience. Not the world, not the characters, not the circumstances. Screenwriting, it's always been disrespected in Hollywood, but this is like, it's at its lowest point right now. This is like Nintendo Easter egg the movie. I would also say, it's a little disturbing, but in today's marketplace, post Me Too, to hear Bowser declare that he's going to ask Princess Peach to marry him, and like his little uh, sycophant sorcerer is like, what if she doesn't want to? And he's like, then I'll destroy her kingdom and kill everyone she knows. And you're like, wow, that's stalker behavior. And I would say, kind of makes this not appropriate for children, quite frankly. <laughs> But while this is supposed to be an origin story where Mario and Luigi do discover the Mushroom Kingdom for the very first time, but the movie is written for fans and fans only. Well, no fucking shit. They decided to give everyone a variation of a New York accent, which again, I found, I found kind of offensive. It's Look, here's the thing. Fine. Listen, I'm gonna um, be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. <laughs> And then, what could Mar uh, Mario turn into a cat? I guess, uh, like, if you're into fur furries, that works. And uh, maybe that'll play really well in Asian markets. I know they love cats over there, like... Bitch, what the fuck? What's up everyone, another day, another slay, and I hope yours is going okay. The Mario movie has just come out, and as I'm making this video, the critic reception of the movie is not great. I mean, to be fair, if you're looking for something to absolutely blow your mind or emotionally move you, yeah, this movie is not the thing you're looking for, yet I have to ask you, what the fuck were you looking for? It's a Mario movie made by Illumination? It's not gonna have a super deep story that'll change your whole outlook on life. It's like going into a John Wick or Avatar movie expecting something like that. No, they're all just perfectly fine movies with stories that are kind of as a backdrop to the pretty colors and cool action sequences. Like genuinely, what were you expecting? I seriously have to wonder why all these critics can give movies like the first three John Wick movies high scores or the fucking Avatar movies high scores. But when this comes out, they complain about how it has no story, or how its story is just a device to show you all these cool action sequences. Because that's exactly what those other two movies are. Yet Mario gets all that shit done in like half the runtime of those. I saw it last night with my friends and it was pretty good. The animation was fucking gorgeous. Most of the jokes landed. Seth Rogen did his laugh that he does in every role that he's in. The way they used the old music from the games was fucking awesome. And the Luma that they had showing up throughout the movie was actually funny as fuck. And yeah, I got what I came for and there's nothing wrong with that yet some people still think there is case in point our victim for today beyond the trailer now i ironically watch her content from time to time because she's actually like really unintentionally funny and she makes some genuinely awful reviews of movies and shows like i remember back last year during her Andor video when she was complaining about how there wasn't enough fan service which is ironic considering what she says in this video later on or more recently her last of us episode 9 video where she was complaining about how joel saving ellie was out of character yeah that shouldn't even need a explaining at this point, but she made a Mario movie review, and it's been kind of getting slammed by the entire internet the last few days since her review dropped, so we're gonna check this shit out. Enough talking and let's see what YouTube has shout out today. So wow! I'm kind of shocked at how bad this movie is! Universal knows though, Universal knows, which is why the embargo is lifting mere hours before the movie premieres. What the hell does that have anything to do with the quality of the movie? Do you know how many genuinely good movies have embargoes that lift late or just straight up don't have early screening periods at all? Like I remember last year, fucking no, probably my third favorite movie of last year had its embargo dropped like the day it premiered, I'm pretty sure. That has nothing to do with the quality of the movie and I have no clue why you're bringing it up. I don't think this is gonna make a billion. Okay, is that supposed to be like a negative thing? The fuck? Do you know how many movies make it to a billion dollars? Like to put it in perspective here, Illumination has only around like four movies, which are all Despicable Me sequels or spinoffs that have actually gotten in the range of 900 million to a billion dollars. I think it might still have a big opening weekend. I don't even know if it's gonna make it to Friday. I think word of mouth on this is gonna be toxic or whatever toxic goo there is in Nintendo world. Actually, it's pretty much the opposite. It's only the critics that hate the movie for some reason, probably because they went into it expecting like Spider-Verse level writing and got standard Illumination Mario movie writing, which is all that it needed. Aside from Galaxy with the storybook sections, which I'm not gonna lie, were really good, but there was nothing that hinted this movie was gonna be anything like Galaxy, so there was no reason to expect that. It destroys stuff that it touches. So let me, let me walk you through this, right? Because I know a lot of you aren't going to believe me, but I think you're going to be seeing a lot of bad reviews drop right now. And uh, 
Yeah, it's unfortunately true. Now, as I've mentioned before when discussing this movie, I don't play Nintendo games, right? Like, I know, I know who the characters are, well, like the big ones, but I'm certainly not a Nintendo fan. Uh, but, you know, just like I say movies shouldn't require homework, this should be accessible to a non-Nintendo fan. Yeah, and it was. Again, this is literally just the story of the games told in a movie format. Italian midget jumps on brown people. That's it. That's all people wanted, and if they were to change that again, we'd probably be getting something like the 90s movie they made. Which, by the way, my only disappointment with this movie was how there was, like, no reference to that 90s movie at all. Like, come the fuck on, you had the perfect opportunity for someone to go MONKEY when they went to the Donkey Kong area, but yeah. But yeah, the only way you could be confused is if you were expecting, like, an in-depth explanation of this world they're in or where it comes from, which the games haven't even done. Especially if it wants to make a billion dollars. But you know, I do love Illumination movies. I watch The Grinch every year. I love Illumination films. I think they're fantastic. Then I don't know why the hell you'd have a problem with this because it's exactly like every other Illumination movie where the story and characters are more so devices to show you pretty colors and jokes. And the trailers for this have been very bright and fun. Plus, I've been really getting into Universal Studios Super Nintendo World. Like I have- I would describe both of these movies as torture to sit through. Whew! And I'm, you know, I like comic books, I like mythology, I get into stuff. I'm open to getting into new fandoms. Yeah, but the difference here is that it's fucking Mario. There is no mythology. It's the most game a game can get, along with Kirby. It's just characters fucking around, and they adapted it into a movie format pretty well. So, the fact that I was like, make it stop, was pretty bad. Although I wanted to walk out of DC Super Pets, as I told you, uh, and the only reason I stayed was because, you know, you know, again, you never, it's, I'm reviewing it. I'd love to be able to say, hey, it gets really good. Narrator, it does not. The Super Mario Brothers movie, this latest, uh, this latest one, uh, they, of course, they did the live action one many years ago. But while this is supposed to be an origin story where Mario and Luigi do discover the Mushroom Kingdom for the very first time, I didn't even know it was called the Mushroom Kingdom. I had to look it up. It's not even made clear in the movie. But the movie is written for fans and fans only. Nothing is explained. Cause nothing needs to be explained. Jesus Christ, how many times do I have to repeat this shit? Again, John Wick and Avatar comparison. Oh, why are there all these assassins in New York? I don't know, shut the fuck up and pay attention to the pretty colors. Oh, how did humans find the blue bitch planet? Bitch, who cares? Look at how fucking hot Jake Sully is. To the audience, not the world, not the characters, not the circumstances, and not even really the point. Now, some of you might be like, good, I'm a fan and I just want to get to it. I mean, there's nothing to get to, but you know, a good screenwriter, you know, screenwriting, it's always been disrespected in Hollywood, but this is like, it's at its lowest point right now. Like a good screenwriter can make this fun for everyone, right? This is like Nintendo Easter Egg the movie. Cause that's how it was marketed and that's what people were expecting from it. And it has a story, but again, just not a very thought provoking one. The opposite of Andor. This is just all Easter eggs. You just choke on them. Yeah, this is what I was saying from earlier back last year when Andor was coming out. She did a review of one of the episodes. I don't know which one. I just heard this from how fucking hilarious it was. But she's like docked points from Andor because it didn't have Easter eggs in it. And now we have a movie that's like stock full of them and she's mad again because there's too many? Bitch, what do you want from a Mario movie? Again, Mario, aside from Galaxy, has a very bare bones story. So when you're making it into a movie, you basically have to fill everything around that story with references to all the games. Like, I would get this complaint when you were talking about like a Zelda movie or even a Metroid movie, because those games actually do have stories and a lot of the time they're actually pretty well written. But fucking Mario by Illumination? Jesus Christ. It's all, it's too much candy. Uh, after a brief opening, which is very Illumination, it seems more Illumination than, than Nintendo, you could be watching a scene from Sing or Secret Life of Pets, quite frankly. But then after that, there's like no story. Well, and what little story they do have, I found a couple of things. One was confusing. Like, why don't any of the other humans look like Mario and his family? I don't know. 
Who the fuck cares? And why is the human world super realistic, yet full of cartoon-looking characters? I don't know, who the fuck cares? Also, what kind of criticism is that? Animated movies have realistic-looking worlds all the time. Putting it into perspective here, you're asking for realistic logic in a fucking Mario movie. Do you hear how stupid that sounds? Like, as long as the movie isn't, like, breaking its own rules it's setting up, who gives a shit? Which, by the way, the movie doesn't. I was like, that's weird. Uh, the animation, though, again, is stunning. And some of the backgrounds in the human world looked almost real. But again, that was so bizarre that there were cartoons running around in there. Uh, back to the story, I would also say it's a little disturbing. What are you on? What the fuck is disturbing about it? This is how this shit goes down in the games all the fucking time. Because apparently in the games, Bowser, I had to look it up, Bowser is obsessed with Princess Peach and has been for a very long time. But in today's marketplace, post Me Too? Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. She is comparing the fucking Mario movie, a kid's movie that about like a midget that jumps on mushrooms to the fucking Me Too movement. Jesus Christ, can we ever just leave fucking politics out of this shit? To hear Bowser declare that he's going to ask Princess Peach to marry him, which apparently isn't a spoiler because I looked it up and it happens in the games all the time. But he's like, I'm gonna ask Princess Peach to marry me. And like his little uh, sycophant sorcerer is like, what if she doesn't want to? And he's like, then I'll destroy her kingdom and kill everyone she knows. And you're like, wow, that's stalker behavior. And I would say, kind of makes this not appropriate for children, quite frankly. Well, it's definitely within his character for him to do that. So I don't know how it's a problem. Also, you want to talk stuff appropriate for children. Look at that fucking hot movie by Illumination, which is like borderline fucking racist with the Mexican stereotype chicks being used as slaves. And you say later on, this was the only bad Illumination movie. How the fuck is this movie worse than hop? What the hell? And I would, in fact, I I would argue that most of the movie is about who's going to date Princess Peach. And that's it. My jaw was on the floor. I'm like, is that really what this movie is about? That is a really outdated story. I think fans and just moviegoers in general and everybody associated with this film deserve more. And it's a shame because Jack Black does a fantastic job as Bowser. You can't even recognize that it's Jack Black's voice. Then Bowser sings and you're like, oh yeah, he's voiced by Jack Black. And you can't, you still can't tell that it's Jack Black. And the, I think that the talent is definitely here. It's just, it's really just the script. So he, Jack Black was fantastic. Uh, also in an effort to move away from doing, speaking of uh, disturbing, I would also classify this movie as a little offensive. Oh my God, please. Fucking stop talking, I'm literally going to die in Elden Ring right now. Because instead of doing the Italian accents, ironically because they were worried about being offensive, instead they decided to give everyone a variation of a New York accent, which again, I found, I found kind of offensive. Really? They were doing that? I mean, I don't even notice it, but all right, even if they did do that, which I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on, who the fuck cares? It's an accent. How the fuck are you getting offended over the way someone's talking? You're acting like it's fucking blackface. Holy shit. Like the only reason I think they didn't do the Italian accent and just straight up have the original voice actor for Mario voice him in the movie is because it would have honestly just get really annoying after like five minutes of it. It's like everyone's either in Goodfellas or a Woody Allen movie because and, and not just in the New York scenes, by the way, Mario and Luigi live in New York City, but you're like, when you get to the Mushroom Kingdom, uh, Donkey Kong Land is the same way. And so you're just kind of like, why would you make that choice? Like, why do you think that's somehow not offensive and the Italian thing would be? It's just crazy. Uh, the movie also leans really heavily on classic hit songs, a little bit the way Guardians of the Galaxy has done. Um, and it sometimes it gets your blood pumping. It's not a bad strategy, but here it's very uh, poorly executed. Yeah, I'll give her that. Honestly, the 80s music in the movie was pretty fucking random and it didn't have like a thematic message to the story like the Guardians movies do. So yeah, it's pretty fair to say that was an actual problem with the movie. Like everything, just when you were like, okay, now we're cooking, they, it peters out and they're like, okay, we're done. And you're like, oh, we didn't, you promised me a fun jam. tired though of girl power for the sake of girl power characters like if you're not going to fully develop them i i just get frustrated because i know certain groups are going to complain peach was fine like she has as much character development as anybody else in the movie did which i guess you can give the criticism that she didn't really have any flaws and i mean fair enough but they didn't really have enough time to do that. Not to mention, again, she was like that in the games. And at least she wasn't like annoying as shit as Ray or Aloy. Thank fuck. Um, and you know, 
it, you should have justification for things. It's like, if you're not gonna do it right, don't do it. And again, she's all girl power, but yet the movie is just about who she's going to date. No? Wh where the fuck are you getting that from? Yeah, it's one of the major plot points, but it's nowhere near the main one. That would be the relationship between Mario and his brother, and how he wants to protect his brother, and... She Jesus Christ, I can't fucking believe I am debating the themes of the fucking Mario movie. This is so stupid, why am I bothering with this shit? She's a princess in name only. I didn't see her make any rules or, 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 or control the kingdom or anything. What the fuck do you mean? That was all she was doing while she was in the castle. You know, she just kind of went on a date with Mario and Bowser was really jealous about it. You're like, is this really what this movie is about? Where did she go on a date with Mario? I'm sorry, genuinely, did we see the same movie? Because I am convinced we didn't at this point. Uh, Keegan Michael Key's voice is also unrecognizable as Toad, which is a shame. I love Keegan Michael Key. Mario and Luigi's relationship just seems really forced. It's like screenwriter Matthew Fogel, who should never work again, saw Fro he's he's done a couple of stuff for Illumination. That's about it. Uh, it's like he saw Frozen and decided to do the male version of Elsa and Anna, but none of the work to make it work. You're gonna explain how it doesn't work or you're just gonna leave it at that because I still don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And since they insisted on putting Mario in the real world, so to speak, why do he and Luigi wear those funny outfits and gloves? I was like, you guys look ridiculous. One, who the fuck cares? Two, they actually do say why they wear them because it's to have their own branding type thing. I mean, it doesn't really make sense, but again, it's a fucking Mario movie, Jesus Christ. This is like looking at Cocaine Bear and complaining about how the bear didn't overdose like immediately. I mean, none of it made sense. None of the, nothing in the movie made sense, so it was hard for me to get into any of it. Speaking of Mario and Luigi though, Charles Martinet, he had a nice cameo. He is the OG and current voice of Mario and Luigi in the games, and a lot of fans were disappointed he's not voicing them here. Uh, but even I was like, oh, that's that Char that's Charles Martinet. That's awesome. And I think it was a very nice thing to do for him. He showed up, I think, twice. He showed up, like, twice. Very, very briefly. But it was cute. Even the action sequences aren't that exciting. There's, like, no suspense. It's just like, oh, hey, look, it's like the game. But you never really feel like you're running any of the gauntlets yourself. You still look like you're watching the game screen instead of being put into the action. That's the whole benefit of making it a movie. What do you mean? What the fuck do you want them to do? Put it in first person or something? These criticisms are so random. What the hell? And then, why could Mar uh, Mario turn into a cat? I guess, uh, like, if you're into fur furries, that works. And uh, maybe that'll play really well in Asian markets. I know they love cats over there, like, love cats. But I just felt it robbed Mario of a lot of his personal dignity. I was like, don't do that to Mario. Where's Mario's agent? What? Well, what? It's a reference to the game. How the fuck is that a problem? I'll admit him turning into a cat in 3D world is kind of cringe and like perfect ammo for furry jokes. But I mean, it's a fucking reference. How is this a problem? Uh, there are also two end credit scenes, but they're not really noteworthy. One's comedic. The second one tries to set up a, like a potential sequel. They're like, oh, if we make another one of these, this character's gonna show up. Get excited! But that character kind of showed up earlier in the film in the background in a way, like at least a variation of them. I spotted him. I spotted him. And this end credit scene is so quick that it's hard to get super excited unless you're just so, so excited about that character. Just like the mere tease or mention or like blip of him is enough. So yeah, this is a mess. There's no story. Nothing is explained to newbies like myself. It's kind of offensive. And none of the animation styles fit together because I guess maybe they're different games. I mean- Oh my God, what do you mean? Please just list a fucking example because I never noticed a part where they changed the animation style, but whatever. I guess it looks this way in Mario Kart, right? But from a story perspective, it just did not work for me. I have never seen an Illumination misfire this bad. In fact, I don't think they've ever misfired. This is not only the worst movie they've ever made, but in my opinion, the only bad movie they've ever made. Bitch, have you seen Hopper the Lorax? I'm sorry. How you can think this is the worst Illumination movie is beyond 